Hello and welcome. This is Jennifer McGuire and I'm very honored to be here for the five ways in five days class event with Simon Says Stamp. I am here to share with you five ways to enhance your holiday crafting with embossing folders. I have lots of cards for you and many, many tips, and I hope that you'll give some of these a try. Let's get started with my first idea for enhancing your holiday cards with an embossing folder, and that is to use your embossing folder on a stenciled or stamped background. I have two card examples for you demonstrating this idea. The first one uses the Simon Says Stamp Stylized Mandala Stencil that you see on the left, and also the Filament Snowflakes 3D Embossing Folder that you see on the right. Before I start creating the card, I thought I would share with you how I go about figuring out what sandwich to use with an embossing folder. Sometimes a manufacturer will say it on their website. However, sometimes you just gotta figure it out on your own by testing things out. I will be using my Spellbinders Platinum die cut machine. You could use whatever die cut machine you may have. Now I noticed for the Simon's Stamp 3D embossing folders, they're very thick, which gives great detail but it doesn't work with the sandwich recommended by the manufacturer for most 3D embossing folders. What I do is I test it out. Here I'm testing out what the manufacturer recommended and notice it doesn't wanna go through. You never wanna force it through. So I need a thinner plate. So I'm gonna take one of the other plates that comes with this machine and I'll put that in there and see if it'll go through. Well, that went through way too easy. So I need a little more. So if I just need a little more, what I like to do is take a piece of cardstock, fold it in half to create a shim, and try that. And when I put this through, it goes through just at the right amount of ease and pressure, and so I know that's my sandwich. So if you have a Spellbinders Platinum machine, for Simon Says Stamp 3D embossing folders, you just need the platform, a folded piece of cardstock, the embossing folder, and your B plate. That works great every time. Now I also do recommend that you mist your cardstock first with a little bit of water. This will help to get a better impression. So I misted both sides with a few spritzes of water and now I'm putting that cardstock into my embossing folder and we'll see if this sandwich works well. I'll run that through. You can go back and forth if you want to, but I usually find it's not necessary. Now, when you look at the results from this embossing folder, keep in mind that this folder is a little unique. It's a 3D embossing folder that does a lot of detail, not necessarily super deep, but look at that beautiful result, such detail to it, beautiful on both sides. I will be using this embossing folder on this first card and again later in this video. I just wanted to start by showing you how to figure out what sandwich you need for an embossing folder. Now let's get started with our first technique of combining stenciling with an embossing folder. I like to start by doing the stenciling. Now you could do stamping here if you prefer, use a background stamp, do repeated stamping, anything. I thought I would do stenciling. I have this beautiful stencil that I'm lining up over a piece of pink cardstock that is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. I have placed my waffle flower grip mat onto my glass work surface, and that will help to hold my cardstock and stencil in place as we ink on top. You could use any sticky mat or pieces of temporary tape. Now over the center of the stencil, I'm applying a dark bluish purple ink. This is Simon Says Stamp Twilight Positively Saturated Ink. I really like blending with these inks because the colors are so vibrant and beautiful. I'm using a Simon Says Stamp blending brush, but you could use whatever blending tool you may have. Next, I'm using the amethyst color and I'll apply that around that bluish purple that we put in the center. Now the key to blending is overlapping your colors. So notice that this amethyst color will overlap that twilight color quite a bit, and that will give us quick and easy blending. I did leave the outer tips of the stencil uninked so that I could apply a third color. By the way, between each color, I just wipe the stencil clean quickly with a dry cloth. Now I have this sweets color, which is a great pink, and I'm applying that ink on the outer area of the stencil, making sure to overlap with the amethyst that we just applied. If you find that some areas don't blend well, I encourage you just let it go. These inks will kind of blend on their own as they dry, and no one will ever notice in the end card. Okay, so here is what we have so far. I really like the look of this, but I wanted to show you that with a stencil like this, you can step it up really easy. You just take your stencil and line it up with what you've done and then rotate it a little bit. 
This will give you a fun offset pattern, which really feel, fills your card background even more, and it gives you a new look. Now over the stencil this time, I just used a light pink. This is bubblegum ink. And I'm using an Altenew blending brush because it's big and I can quickly apply that ink over the whole surface. Now let's do a side-by-side -side comparison. On the right, we have the stencil just used once. On the left, we have the same inking, but then I rotated the stencil a little bit and did light pink ink. I love that layered look. Now that we have an inked up background, let's step it up, enhance it by using an embossing folder. I did two backgrounds exactly the same. On one, we'll use the 3D embossing folder, and on the other, we'll use a 2D embossing folder. Let's start with that snowflake 3D embossing folder that I demonstrated with earlier. I will mist the back of this just a little bit, just to get a better impression. You don't want to miss the front because that will react with the inks that you use, so the back is a little bit safer. I'll place that inside of that 3D embossing folder and use the sandwich that I mentioned earlier. I'll run that through my die cut machine, and this will add lots of texture. This is beautiful as is, but I'm going to show you a tip to make that texture stand out even more in a moment. But first, let's use the other background that I created the same way. I'll miss the back of it, and this time I'm placing it into a traditional embossing folder, a 2D embossing folder. This is Swiss Dot from Gina K Design. Now, whenever you have a traditional or 2D embossing folder, you can just follow the manufacturer's recommended sandwich when running it through your die cut machine. So I'm just using the sandwich that Spellbinders recommended, and look at the beautiful dots that you can get. So you really can use a variety of embossing folders on top of your stenciled or stamped backgrounds to enhance it and get great results every time. Now there is an additional step that you can do to make that texture stand out even more. And this is optional, but I really think it steps it up. I have some Simon Says Stamp white pigment ink and a Tim Holtz Brayer. I'm picking up as much of that white pigment ink as I can with the Brayer, and I will roll this on top of our textured background. So this is the background where we use the Snowflake 3D embossing folder. I'm very gently rolling this white ink over the surface. So any of those raised areas will capture that ink, and it just helps to make that texture stand out more. Now you could do a darker ink, maybe like a darker pink ink, and roll that on top, but I really love that soft white that we get by using the white pigment ink. Here's a closer look. Now you can see that snowflake texture even more. Now let's do the same thing with our other background where we use the dot embossing folder. If you don't have a brayer, you could definitely go direct to your paper with the ink pad. However, you want to be very gentle and very light handed so that the ink only lands on the raised areas. That's why a brayer is very helpful and definitely a tool that I recommend all crafters have. There are many techniques you can do with it. Okay, so now we have two backgrounds. Let's create two cards. Now I did trim my pink backgrounds down to be about four by five and a quarter inches. This will look nice on a four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note card. I did want my background to stand up a little bit off of our note card. I wanted some dimension there. You could use foam tape, but I really recommend that you keep any of your trash in your craft room to build up that dimension. Here I have the front and the back from a pad of glitter paper. I used all the glitter paper, so this was trash, and I just trimmed two pieces down to be slightly smaller than my pink background, and I'll glue them behind the pink background. This will give it some strong, sturdy dimension on the front of my note card. You could use foam tape, but sometimes that gets crushed in the mail. And honestly, this is a great way to save a penny as you craft. You could use cereal boxes here. You could use mess up scraps, anything you want to build up that strong dimension behind your cardstock panel. So now you can see that pink kind of stands up off our note card. Next, we need a sentiment, and I wanted to go right there in the center of the card. I'm using this older Simon Says Stamp CZ Design Let It Snow stamp set. I use this one a lot. I'm using the Let It Snow sentiment. I wanted that at the center of the card, but stamping it with black ink on white cardstock was too distracting. So I'm gonna show you a trick. I'm starting with pink cardstock. It's the same color that I used on the background of my card. 
I'm inking up that sentiment with Versamark ink and I'll stamp that and add white embossing powder and heat set it. So I have a white heat embossed sentiment on pink. Next, I will take that first color that I used at the center of our stencil, that twilight color, and apply that over our heat embossed sentiment. Once I've done that, I can wipe away the excess ink off of the embossing, which will resist that ink. And now the background of this sentiment will match the background at the center of our stenciling. So now I can use the coordinating die to cut it out and look at how that just fits perfectly there at the center. The color is just right. Using some scraps of that pink cardstock, I die cut two additional die cuts putting glue on those and gl then gluing that behind our heat embossed sentiment. That will give it some dimension to hold up nicely through the mail. I'll glue that right at the center of our card. And then I'm adding some Trinity Stamps Shimmer and Shine sequins to the pattern that we have stenciled on the background. I am using a tool from Simon Says Stamp that has like a sticky end on one side and a piercing tool on the other. This is excellent for picking up those little pieces of confetti or gems and placing them where you want. Now this wraps up this card. However, this brings me to my second way to enhance your holiday cards with embossing folders. And that is to use your embossing folder on your matching envelope. So I'm gonna use that same Snowflake 3D embossing folder, but I'll use it on the flap of my envelope. So what I like to do is open up my embossing folder and then stick the flap in the side and then line it up with the crease on that envelope flap. Then I can run it through my die cut machine. Now with my die cut machine and this 3D embossing folder, I can put it through sideways like this and I'm able to put that impression on the flap of the envelope alone and that will match perfectly with my card. So this is your second way to enhance your holiday cards. It's to use embossing folders on the envelope flap. Now, if your embossing folder is too big to go through sideways on your die cut machine, don't worry. For example, here is that Gina K Design Swiss Dot embossing folder that we used on our second background. Now this one's bigger, which is great because you can use it on bigger backgrounds. However, you can't put it through sideways. So all you need to do is put the flap in the embossing folder, fold the rest of the envelope behind it, then run it through your die cut machine as you normally would for that particular embossing folder. And now you have those dots on the envelope flap. This is a really easy and quick way to enhance your holiday cards and make them more special. All right, so let's look at our completed cards here. You can see here we have the embossing folder texture over that stenciling. And you can see it more because we put that bit of white pigment ink on the raised areas. So I did stenciling to start with, but you could do stamping, you could do background stamping, you could do ink blending, anything you want. Then do the embossing folder on top of it. I still have the background that has the dot embossing folder on it. For this one, I used the Simon Says Stamp CZ Design Winter Wishes stamp set. And this one has a coordinating die set, which made it easy to add it to the center of our card. I used the Winter Wishes sentiment, and I did the same technique that I showed you before, where I heat embossed on pink cardstock and added that blue ink on top. So it's a very similar card design. However, on this one, I use the dot embossing folder in a different sentiment. So with these two card examples, we've covered two ways to enhance your holiday cards with embossing folders. The first is to combine it with a stenciled or stamped background. And the second is to use it on the envelope flaps to add a little bit of interest. And there we have our first two cards. Let's move on to that third idea for enhancing your holiday cards using embossing folders. And this one is a good one because I have lots of examples and you can likely use something you already have in your stash. Now for this, you need a paper that has a white core to it. Now that sounds complicated, but I have lots of examples and I bet you have something. The first thing you could use for this technique is any kind of pattern paper. Now here I have a lawn fawn paper pad. This has some gold foiling on it, but notice the back of this pattern paper is white. In most cases, any pattern paper that has a white background will work well for this. So that is one thing that you can use. If you are unsure, something that you can do is tear your paper. If you tear it and you see that white revealed, 
you know it will work for this. Now here's another example. This is a color paper pad from Memory Box. And if you look closely at these, it actually has a white core. It's colored on both sides, but still white on the inside. And I know that because when I tear it, I can see some white. So these paper pads would work really well. In fact, most paper pads that are six by six will work for this. Next, you could use any kind of gold or silver matte cardstock. This one's from Simon Says Stamp. When I tear it, notice there's a white tear there. The back of it's white, so I also know that would work. Here I have some Tim Holtz foil cardstock. Now this is unique because it has a craft core instead of white. I know that because when I tear it, you can see craft cardstock revealed and the back side of it is craft. He has lots of different pads like this. These all work great and I love the color of foil that these have. So I'll demonstrate with this one. Another option is Simon Says Stamp has color blends. I really like these. They have a shiny finish and a beautiful blend. So if you like the look of blended backgrounds but struggle with blending, this is a great option. And because the back is white and when you tear it, it's white, I know these will work for this technique. So look through your stash, look at your pattern papers, your specialty card stocks. I bet you have something that will work well. So I went through all of these options and I grabbed a few pieces, trimmed them down to four and a quarter by five and a half inches so that I can demonstrate with each. The technique here is to use your embossing folder and then sand away the raised color to reveal that white inside. So I have a Simon Says Stamp Burst Snowflakes embossing folder. This is a 3D embossing folder and it actually comes with the dies so that you can cut out some of those fun shapes, but I'm just using the folder today. You could definitely do this technique with any traditional or 3D embossing folder. Any would work for this. For this technique, I just use the embossing folder with each of these pieces of cardstock. This first one is the gold matte cardstock from Simon Says Stamp. I'll run that through the die cut machine as I demonstrated earlier in this video. And look at that beautiful texture. I just love metallic cardstocks with embossing folders. This next one is the Tim Holtz metallic cardstock. Remember this one has craft cardstock on the inside, which will look really cool when we do the next step of this technique. I will use the same sandwich for each of these. Notice I'm not misting with water this time. It's really not necessary because these cardstocks won't really absorb the water unless you spray it on the back, but you really don't have to do that mist of water. It does give a deeper impression, but it's not always necessary. I really love this next background. This is one of the Simon Says Stamp color blends. Look how gorgeous that is. And then finally, we have that colored cardstock from uh, Memory Box. This has color on both sides, but it has a white core. And I'll run that through and you get a beautiful result. But we wanna really step these up. The reason I chose to use cardstocks that have a white or craft core is that you can sand off the surface of the raised areas to reveal that white or craft on the inside. So this is the memory box paper, which we know has a white core to it. I just use a sanding block to rub across the raised area and notice the white is revealed which enhances that embossing folder pattern. I'm using a sanding block from Paper Artsy, but you really could use any sanding paper that you may have. I feel like a finer grit sanding paper is best here, but try what you have just being gentle. And look at that, you can see that white revealed because we sanded away that color that was on the surface of the paper. This next one is the Simon Says Stamp Color Blend. This is a glossy finish, but still works great. I'll sand off the raised areas and look at how the white is revealed, enhancing that pattern. It just really makes all that detail stand out even more. Next, I have the gold matte cardstock. Now, when you sand this gold matte cardstock a little bit, what actually is revealed is silver behind it. If I kept sanding, we would see the white, but I'm going to kind of stop short of that just so we see that silver and a little bit of white. So you want to experiment with what you have, but look at, can you see that silver in the raised areas and a tad bit of white? Just really makes that pattern stand out even more. Next up, we have the metallic cardstock from Tim Holtz. Remember, this one's unique because it has the craft core. The backside is even craft. 
When I sand away that kind of aqua colored metallic on the front, we reveal a little bit of the silver and we reveal a little bit of the craft behind it, which really makes that pattern stand out more. So you can see the craft in those little details and also a bit of silver. I just love how this steps it up. So here are the backgrounds that we have so far. Now I did want to show you one more thing you can do to step up these backgrounds, but I'm only going to do it on one of them. So I'll just do one example. On this one that was the memory box purple paper, it was purple on both sides, but white core. I am adding some pink ink onto the raised areas. Those raised areas are white now, so that white ink will grab the pink ink. So now we have this raised texture that's pink against that dark purplish blue background, which is a really cool effect to have that light color against the dark background. So that is a way that you could step up any of the backgrounds we just created by applying ink over the raised areas. Okay, so now let's turn these backgrounds into cards before we move on to other embossing folder technique ideas. On each of these backgrounds, I added a snowflake using the Simon Says Stamp Snowflake Trio die set. I'm using the large snowflake die and cutting twice from white cardstock and once from silver glitter cardstock and gluing those together for a layered dimensional look. I will then glue that onto the front of a vellum die cut that I made with the shadow die. So we'll have a vellum shadow around that glitter snowflake. I then die cut two more snowflakes from white cardstock, glued those together, and I'll glue that to the back of our vellum die cut. This will give some dimension behind it so that our snowflake looks like it's floating on the front of the card. Now you could skip some of that dimension if you prefer. I love all that dimension. You definitely could use one layer of cardstock if you would rather. I created a snowflake like that for each of the backgrounds. Now it's time for a sentiment. I'm using the Simon Says Stamp Graceful Holiday Sentiment Stamp Set and the coordinating die. I love the elegant options here. I'd stamped a different sentiment for each of my cards with black ink on white cardstock and used the die to cut it out. And now I will glue those sentiments right at the center of each of the snowflakes for each of my cards. After I've placed the sentiment on each of the snowflakes, I can flip it over and put glue on those white die cuts on the back of it. That way I can glue it to my card and the adhesive won't show. So I'll place that onto our embossing folder background. On each note card, I put the snowflake in a different position just to change the design a little bit. Each time I did put something heavy on it while it dries. So here are the four cards we created with this technique. This technique is to use your embossing folders with a white core cardstock so that you can sand the raised surface. It's a great way to enhance your holiday cards. Here's a closer look at their first one. This one uses the color blends from Simon Says Stamp, which has a glossy finish and beautiful color on it. When you sand that raised embossing folder surface, you can see the white showing through. Next, we have the card where we use the gold metallic cardstock with this technique. And when you sand over that embossing folder, you get a little silver and white showing up. I really like this gold and silver look. And I used a silver envelope with that same embossing folder on the flap so it would match nicely. You could mass produce with this technique by skipping some of the layers of the snowflake die cut. It would be a fun one that would be sure to impress anyone who gets it. And we have our purple background where we did the embossing folder, sanded it to reveal the white, and then added pink ink on that raised area. So you get the two colors on the background. And then finally, we have the background where we use the metallic cardstock from Tim Holtz that has the craft core. So when we did the embossing folder on this and sanded it, we revealed a little silver from the metallic and some of that craft core. And of course, we did the embossing folder to match on the envelope flap. So, so far we've shared three ways to enhance your holiday cards with embossing folders. It's time for number four. Now the idea for this card is to use your embossing folders on your die cuts to add lots of texture. This is especially effective when you have basic shapes. I will be demonstrating with two Simon Says Stamp die sets. On the left, we have the small bottle brush tree set. In the middle, we have the large bottle brush tree set. I'll use those two, but note that the set over on the right called the Whirl Layered Evergreen would also be really great for this technique, although I decided not to use it today. 
Now there are layers for these bottle brush trees, but I'm only using that basic shape, that basic tree shape, so that I can demonstrate how to step up your basic die cuts by using embossing folders. The embossing folder I'm using today is new from Simon Says Stamp. It's called the Enchanting Forest. I'm putting my tree die cuts into the embossing folder and I'll run it through as I normally do. Now I cut these from scraps of green cardstock and I am misting them with a bit of water before doing the embossing folder. Again, that is just to make a deeper impression, but it's really not necessary. I will then run that through my die cut machine and look at the beautiful texture we've added to those die cuts. So my fourth idea for enhancing your holiday cards with embossing folders is to use your folders on your die cuts. Now you could stop and leave them as they are, but I thought I would add a little bit of shine. So I'm placing those die cuts onto my waffle flower grip mat. And on top of it, I'm using my Tim Holtz Brayer and some Honey Bee Silver Metallic ink. And I'm just rolling that ink over the raised areas only. So now there's silver shine to the raised pattern on these die cuts. If you want something more subtle, you could just use a darker green ink or maybe even a white, a little bit of white pigment ink or some Versamark ink. But I thought that silver would help to make them stand out. I do like dimension behind my die cuts. So I die cut two additional tree shapes and glued it to the back. This will make sure it stands up nicely when it goes to the mail, but you could skip it if you wanted to. From a scrap of dark gray cardstock, I'm cutting a thin strip, and I will use this as the trunks on my tree. Now remember the die set did come with a detailed trunk and branches, but I'm totally skipping that for this card so I could get a different look from that die set. I will glue an extra long trunk to the base of each of our trees, and I can always trim it shorter once my card is complete. Once I have my three trees assembled, it's time to create the background. I use the new Simon Says Stamp Pin Cushion Background Die. This cuts a cardstock piece that's four and a quarter by five and a half inches, along with a pierced pattern and tiny little holes. I cut that from white cardstock and I'll add it to a blue note card that is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. That way that blue shows through those little die cut holes. Now I can add my three trees onto that note card. I'll put the first big tree right there at the center using liquid adhesive. I like to use Gina K Connect in her fine tip bottle. Now the other trees, I need a little dimension so that I can overlap with that first tree. So I put some foam squares on the back left side of that die cut, and then I'll put liquid adhesive on the rest of it. Then I can lay it on top of our other tree and it'll have that fun dimension. So the first tree will be kind of set back and that second one will be kind of popped up in front of it. I'll do the same thing with the third tree die cut over to the right. Then I can add my Peace and Joy die cut that's stamped with black ink on white cardstock and cut out with a coordinating die. And that's from the same Graceful Greeting stamp set I showed you earlier. And remember, I added a lot of dimension to my die cuts here. You do not have to. You could definitely just do one layer for each, and that will limit the amount of bulk on your card. Okay, now I can just trim off those tree trunks, and we have our card front complete. Here's a closer look at our completed card. Notice that those simple tree die cuts really are enhanced by using that 3D embossing folder and also by adding that little bit of silver pigment ink on top. It really didn't take long to do and it adds so much to this card. I did finish it off by adding a few green sequins just so we have a little sparkle to those trees. So think about any basic die shape you have, you can add some texture and interest to it by using an embossing folder. This brings me to my fifth and final idea for enhancing your holiday cards using an embossing folder. This one is really fun, and that is to use your embossing folder on your clear window on the front of a shaker card. This adds interest and can really step up a simple card design. I'm using the same 3D snowflake embossing folder from Simon Says Stamp that I used on my first card, but this time I'm using the embossing folder on a piece of acetate. Now this acetate is Simon Says Stamp lightweight acetate, but you can try any clear packaging you may have and see if that will work. 
I'll run that through my die cut machine as I would if I were using regular cardstock in my embossing folder and check out those results. I put blue paper behind it so you could see, but now we have a clear paste with fun texture and it catches the light so nicely. This is fun for like a window card, a clear card, but in this case, I'll use it on the front of a shaker window. To form the frame for our shaker window, I'm using the Waffle Flower Nesting Rectangle Frame die set. And I'll cut one from white cardstock and I'll put double sided tape on the back of it. If you do not have a frame die set, you could use a rectangle die set and take two rectangle dies that are slightly different size and cut them together to form a frame. I will then place this onto the front of our embossed acetate piece. Using my scissors, I will trim off all of that extra acetate so we just have the frame with the acetate at the center. To form the walls of our shaker window, I'm using Gina K shaker strips. These are narrow foam strips that are great for shaker cards. So I've flipped over my acetate window and on the back of the frame, I'm putting these strips and making sure that I really get them close together so that everything will be sealed inside. We don't want any gaps. There are many ways you can form the walls of your shaker windows, but this is definitely the fastest to use foam tape. To prevent my little sequins from sticking against the side of the foam tape or on the acetate window, I'm using an anti-static powder tool. This is a tool called This Calls for Confetti It's No Secret Anti-Static Powder Tool. It has a brush tip here that I'll just apply along the sides of the foam tape and that acetate window. I will then knock off the excess powder and add some sequins to the inside. I'm once again using Trinity Stamps Shimmer and Shine Confetti. You can really put anything you want in here, any gems, pearls, or sequins. Now I have a piece of blue cardstock that's cut to be slightly smaller than our shaker window. On this blue cardstock, I'm gluing some of those same sequins kind of scattered on the background. This way I will be sure that some of my sequins won't fall to the bottom. This is the back of the shaker window and it'll also catch some of the sequins and keep them from all falling down so that we'll have sparkle throughout the window no matter what. Now we can remove the release paper from the back of our frame and I'll take our background piece and flip it over and place it right onto that exposed foam tape. Once I've pressed it down, I can flip it over and you can see how all of our sequins move around freely, but some of them are glued in place so they don't fall to the bottom, making sure there's always some sparkle to be seen. On the front of our shaker window, I'm adding a sentiment using the new Simon Says Stamp All the Joy die set. I cut the shadow die from the same blue cardstock I used for the background of my shaker window, and then I used a darker blue cardstock for the words All the Joy and then I will glue that right onto the front of our window. I really like the style of the sentiment. I then cut some snowflakes from silver matte cardstock using the Simon Says Stamp Harmony Snowflake dies. I'll glue these three snowflakes right on top of our shaker window. Once complete, I added our shaker window to the front of a dark blue note card that's four and a quarter by five and a half inches, and I used the same snowflake embossing folder on a silver envelope flap. So here is a closer look at the completed card. It's hard to see in the video, but that acetate piece on the front of our shaker window has texture to it, that snowflake embossing texture. This really adds a lot of interest in real life. I wish I could capture it in the video. It catches the light nicely and is a wonderful way to enhance your holiday cards with an embossing folder. Now keep in mind, if you don't like to do shaker windows, you could also just do a window on a card or create a clear card front where you use the embossing folder. So many ways you can use this technique. So there you have it, five ways to use embossing folders to step up your holiday crafting. I hope you enjoyed these ideas and will give them a try. Thank you so much for spending this time with me and have a great day. Hi there, I'm Heidi, Simon's mama and founder at simonsaysstamp.com. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you like what you just saw, be sure to press the thumbs up and subscribe to see more great content.